This is a video about the extended complex plane, denoted by C hat. It's also known as the Riemann sphere, sometimes denoted by C sub infinity, or the complex projective plane, sometimes denoted by CP1. So we've seen how to handle complex limits at infinity in a previous video, but I know that infinity is not a complex number. But we should still have some intuition for how it should interact with complex numbers. And we're gonna base that intuition off of familiar ideas with limits. So for a complex number z, let's define one, infinity plus z in either order, ought to just give you infinity. If z is non-zero, then zero times infinity in either order ought to just give you back infinity. Infinity times infinity ought to give you infinity. Z divided by infinity, you know, a fixed complex number divided by something, you know, intuitively massive should be zero. And if Z is non-zero, then Z divided by zero, we'll just say that's infinity. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new set that has all the complex numbers and the symbol infinity. Here's our definition. The set C hat, which is defined to be the union of the complex numbers with this new symbol infinity. This is called the extended complex plane. And like I said in the title, it's also called the Riemann sphere, and we're gonna talk in this video about why. And sometimes it's called the complex projective plane as well, and some other notations for it are C sub infinity and CP1. So recall the connection between the complex number C and the unit sphere in R3, which is all the points X, Y, Z, you know, whose sum of squares of the coordinates gives you one. And what we saw in a previous video is that if you delete the North Pole, which is the point 001, then there's a correspondence between all the points on the sphere besides the North Pole to the complex plane. It's called the stereographic projection. And so I can get a function phi, and phi is the stereographic projection. And uh, how I want you to look at this picture, you know, the complex plane is the xy plane down there. And I'm saying if you take a point on the sphere like xyz, I'm going to make a line through that point in n, and where that line intersects the xy plane, in other words, the complex plane, that gives you your complex number. That's how we're going to project from the sphere down to the complex plane. And the formula to do that, if you plug in a point xyz, here's what you do with xy's and z's to get that point in the plane. x over 1 minus z plus i times y over 1 minus z. And this function's a bijection, and I went through a big video about how, why it's a bijection, and uh, also in the video we uncovered its inverse. And its inverse, if you take a point down in the complex plane, in other words, the xy plane in my picture, and you want to know what point does that correspond to on the sphere, then here is the formula based on the real and imaginary parts of your complex number. Now, uh, something else that uh, we saw in a previous video is that phi and phi inverse are both continuous functions. And that tells me that phi, the stereographic projection, it's a homeomorphism. So that's a big topology word there. So what that means is that the sphere with the North Pole deleted and the complex plane, those are topologically equivalent. Those, those are equivalent topological spaces. So recall, if you take a point on the sphere it's not the North Pole, but if you let that point on the sphere approach the North Pole, then when you take the modulus of the stereographic projection, the modulus gets huge. So in other words, what I'm trying to say is points on the sphere, as you get closer to the North Pole, then that corresponds to a complex number with a giant modulus. So what that does though, you know, the modulus goes to infinity. This gives us maybe an intuitive way to try to extend the stereographic projection from the whole sphere to not just the complex plane, but to the extended complex plane. So what we're going to do is we're going to send n, you know, our kind of bad point as far as the stereographic projection was concerned. Let's just say n gets sent to infinity. And so here's our new definition. I'm going to define a new function for you. We'll call it phi hat. And this goes from the whole sphere, n included, s2, to the extended complex plane. And the formula is just kind of piecewise. As long as you're not the North Pole, then uh, you have the same output, x over 1 minus z plus i times y over 1 minus z. And uh, the last one just says, if you are n, then n gets sent to, inf uh, to infinity in the extended complex plane. So that's a bijection too. You know, I already know it's a bijection when it's not the North Pole, and the North Pole goes to infinity, so it's still a one-to-one -one correspondence. And in fact, it's continuous as well, and it has an inverse that's continuous, and so it's a homeomorphism, so that the... the uh, Sphere is homeomorphic to the extended complex plane, and then that is maybe why some people call this the, the Riemann sphere. That's why some people call the extended complex plane the Riemann sphere, because you can literally realize it as the sphere. So here's a convention. 
A line in the complex plane, we're going to say that a line in the complex plane is a circle in the extended complex plane that goes through the point infinity. And you know, the point infinity is not something you can really visualize, but if I drew you a line in the complex plane, you know, I have one symbol infinity, right? And as I move away from zero, the complex numbers, right? The complex numbers approach that number, in that, that not number, but that new point infinity. So like, what am I trying to say? If I've got this line, you know, on either end, they approach the same symbol infinity. It's like that line kind of wraps around. So that's the intu intuition for why we're gonna call it a circle. And again, if that's kind of weird, right? Like this isn't real analysis where if you go really far to the right on a number line, you get positive infinity and you've got somebody else named negative infinity, right? What we're saying is there's one symbol infinity that stands for you being really far away from the origin in any direction. It's the same symbol though in all directions. So here's what we're gonna do for the rest of the video, the big thing, the theorem here, the extended stereographic projection, remember phi hat, that bijectively takes circles on the sphere to circles in the extended complex plane. And here, circles through the North Pole on the sphere, those corresponds to lines, like in my picture right there, through infinity in the extended complex plane. So we're gonna try and prove this theorem. And I'm going to follow uh, the proof pretty closely of what uh, Gamelin does in his book. He's got a great book. You can find it. So I'll give you a picture. Let's let C naught be a circle on the sphere. And how do you make a circle on the sphere? That's obtained by intersecting the sphere with some plane. And the equation of a plane, I'm going to write it here. I've got like these tilde coordinates because I'm going to use a little x, y, and z without tildes a little bit later on. So when I'm in 3D, I'll use these tilde coordinates here. Okay, so C naught is obtained by intersecting our plane with the sphere. Now, the other thing that I know is that any point on the sphere, I know that it can be realized as the uh, inverse, phi inverse, or phi hat inverse, of the complex number of some point in the complex plane, x plus i, y. And uh, we had its formula earlier. And so here, the first coordinate is what x tilde would be, and the middle coordinate is what y tilde would be, and the last coordinate is what z tilde would be. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna substitute this expression in for x tilde, y tilde, and z tilde, in the equation of our plane. And so here's what that looks like. Now, the reason we're doing that, why are we doing that? I'm trying to say that, you know, phi hat inverse of a complex number is on our blue circle. And if you think about, you know, take phi on both sides of that. That says that now we should be able to describe all the x plus i y's that are on the stereographic projection of C0. So i.e., again, we can describe the stereographic projection of C0. So I wanna know what is the image of C0 when I take the stereographic projection. So now I've got an equation to work with. I've got something to play with. So we're gonna do some algebra to this. We're going to clear the denominators out. So I just move the x squared plus y squared plus one, um, multiplied it through. And then uh, now let's, you know, I see some stuff that has some x squareds plus y squareds on both sides. And I see some, you know, just constants without any x's and y's. Let's get those together. And just to keep in mind, right, like all of this work we're doing now is in two dimensions, right? Like we're in the plane. So we're in like college algebra class. Okay, so what did I do? I got the x squared plus y squareds together. I, you know, I moved the d over. So c minus d comes out of that. And you get x squared plus y squared. And I also uh, subtracted the d over. And then I just factored the negative out. So minus c plus d over at the end. Now here's some cases that we're going to look at because what we want to try to do is identify like, what the heck is this equation that I'm left with? You know, it's some graph in the in the plane. Um, what is it? So if c equals d, well then the x squared plus y squareds go away, and your equation is just 2ax plus 2by equals uh, if c equals d. I think you get 2c if you move that over. And I realize, hey, that's the equation of a line. It's like the standard form equation of a line that none of your college algebra students like to use. And so I know that that's a line. But also, if c equals d, then if I think about the equation of the plane, then the point 0, 0, 1, when I plug those in for x tilde, y tilde, and z tilde, that says c equals c. So hey, that works, that's true. So the North Pole is a point on the plane. And if it's a point on the plane, look at my picture, well then it's a point on the circle too. So what did we just get at here? What I'm trying to say is that we've shown that the stereographic projection of our circle from this, on the sphere, that is gonna be a line in the extended complex plane if and only if the North Pole is on the circle that's on the sphere. Now let's look at case two. What if C is not equal to D? Well, then C minus D is non-zero. And if I scroll up a little bit and I look at my equation uh, that's above case one, that means we can divide through everything by C minus D. And if we do that, we get X squared plus Y squared plus something X plus something Y equals some real number over on the right-hand side. And what the heck is this? 
And in order to identify what this is, we're going to do some more algebra. We're going to complete the square. And to remind you how that goes, I'm just going to rewrite this a little bit. I'm going to get the x terms kind of together. I'm going to get the y terms kind of together. And remember, to complete the square, you're going to take the coefficient that's on x, divide it by 2, and square it. And that's what we're going to add to both sides. So that looks like that. Same thing, we're going to complete the square on the y terms. The same idea, take the coefficient on y, divide it by 2, square it, and add it to both sides. Now the whole point of this is that when you look at just the x terms plus that yellow constant, that factors as a perfect square. It factors as x plus the thing you added, uh, all quantity squared. So I get plus, same idea with the y's, and now just, you know, that horrible right-hand side. So what's going on here? How do we want to look at this? I'm going to put a little star by this equation because we're going to refer to it a little bit later as we go. Uh, but here's how I want to look at it. The right hand, I'm sorry, the left hand side, that is a sum of two squares. So it's a sum of two non-negative real numbers. We're saying that, that is equal to whatever the heck this is. So let's think about just what are the possibilities for the right hand side and uh, what do we get? So subcase one, let's say the right hand side is a positive number. Well then this is, looks like you know, the center radius form of the equation of a circle. Um, you know, you've got the, the center, it looks like, you know, your H is like minus A over C minus D, and your K, if this rings a bell, is minus B over C minus D. And the right-hand side, uh, that's your radius squared. So anyway, that equation represents a circle. So subcase one, you get a circle. Subcase two, what if the right-hand side is zero? Well, then let's think about what that would look like. That says that the sum of these two non-negative real numbers is zero. The only way that could happen is if each of the things I added together on the left, each of them had to be zero. The only way that each of those squared things can be zero is if each of the insides is zero. So that says x has to be minus a over c minus d, and y has to be minus b over c minus d. So you just get a single point. Subcase three, what if the right-hand side is a negative number? Well, then that says that the sum of two non-negative real numbers gives you a negative number, which is ridiculous. That has no solutions. Now let's think about these subcases. You know, we've exhausted all the possibilities as far as what the right-hand side could be. The last two subcases, they're impossible. Let's talk about why. It's because I know that phi hat is a bijection. And so phi hat of a circle, C naught from the sphere, right? Phi hat can't send all the points on that circle to a single point, and it can't send all the points on that circle to nothing, right? They have to go somewhere. And so um, because it's a bijection again, phi hat of C naught can't be a single point, nor can it be the empty set. So those two cases, sub, uh, subcases, sorry, are impossible. So subcase one, in other words, that you get a circle. That's the only possibility. So to recap, phi hat of C naught is a legit circle in uh, the extended complex plane, and that was the case again when C was not equal to D. So what we've just done is we finished showing that phi hat takes circles on the sphere, two circles and lines in the extended complex plane. But what it remains to do is to show that this is done bijectively, right? We need to show that there is a bijective correspondence between circles on the sphere and circles in the extended complex plane. And so in other words, like why is any circle or line in the extended complex plane, why can we realize that as the stereographic projection of a unique circle on the sphere? Why can we get that blue circle? How do we know there exists a blue circle that gives me um, a circle or a line in the extended complex plane? So let's do circles first, like legit circles. So a circle in the extended complex plane, I'm thinking college algebra, I've got a standard form equation for a circle. I write it this way, x squared plus y squared plus something x plus something y plus something d prime equals zero. And uh, what we're interested in, right, is I wanna try to tell you about what is the plane that I could use to slice through the sphere and project that down to get this circle. So how do the coefficients here, how do they help me recover that plane? We're kind of working backwards than we did in the previous direction. So uh, and the way that we'll do that is we're just gonna compare this to the equation for the circle that we got by using a plane to slice through the sphere and project it down. And remember, that was this equation, c minus d, blah, 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 2ax plus 2by minus c plus d. So that equation came from using a plane, right? And so uh, again, we're just kind of working backwards. Let's try to compare these coefficients. Let's line them up. So we're going to define a, b, c, and d. And again, we're going to use those to define a plane momentarily. Let's define a, b, c, and d such that, well, c minus d looks like it's got to be 1 because that's the coefficient on x squared plus y squared. Uh, 2a has to be a prime because that's the coefficient on x. And, um, you know, try to notice the colors between the two equations I'm comparing here. Uh, the purple B prime has to be the same thing as 2B. And uh, D prime has to be the same thing as minus C plus D. So what have we done, right? If you work through that algebra that we did in the first case, like we saw that, hey, that determines a plane that slices through the sphere and gives me 
this circle that I have back. So we've obtained our plane whose intersection with S2 is the circle on S2 whose stereographic projection is our circle that I've highlighted here uh, that we started with in the complex plane. So again, like if you take a circle in the, in the extended complex plane, boom, here is how we can get the circle on the sphere. Now what we need to do is uh, the same game for, uh, for lines. Oh, also, before I do lines though, you know, this circle that we obtain, it doesn't contain the North Pole since C minus D is one, it's not zero. So C is not equal to D. All right, so last thing, a line in the extended complex plane. I know, you know, college algebra, standard form equation, something X plus something Y plus some constant equals zero. And what we're gonna do, same game, how do we figure out what is the plane I should use to slice through the sphere and stereographically project that down to obtain this line? So we're gonna recover the coefficients for the equation of that plane. And uh, same game, we're just gonna compare to, well, here is um, the equation of a line that I had from before when I used a plane to build the stuff. And I know in that case, that's when C was equal to D. I need the squared stuff to go away. So we're gonna define A, B, C, and D by, let's take C minus D to be zero so that there is no squared stuff. And then let's match up the colors. So A prime has to be two A. Oh, by the way, if C minus D is zero, then C equals D, of course. But now the green stuff, 2a is a prime, purple stuff, 2b is b prime, and then the yellows minus c plus d is what d prime is going to be. And let's just maybe simplify that a little bit. If c is the same thing as d, then the left-hand side, maybe I'll just use d's. So that's minus 2d is equal to d prime. And so what have we got? Then the plane that we seek is this, a x tilde plus b y tilde plus d uh, z tilde equals the same d, right? And uh, again, this is the plane you should use such that when you slice through the sphere, you get a circle, right? It goes through M because C equals D. And when you project that down, you obtain our line A prime X plus B prime Y plus D prime equals zero. And so again, notice N is a point on this plane. So here is where our line in the extended complex plane is the stereographic projection of the circle that this plane creates when you intersect it with the sphere.